vehicle. Anytime you bring a vehicle off the ground, you always want to bring it up just a little bit. Yeah. Give it a good shake. Oh, that's a good idea. Back to my rise. I would like to magically induce this. Is this a good roll of the open? No. Leo. Roll the open. Here we go. That's making a good day. Good tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. Oh. <laughs> yes! I'm gonna start crying and laughing so hard. I did not do that. Melissa. <laughs> Jason show. I'm Jace. Audience, clap one more time for my sidekick sister. It's Kendall Mark, everybody. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Magic. Happy day. I have magic in my veins. Yeah. Didn't you see? I can I do. lift a car. You lifted a car. Look at mm -hmm. that. You're magic. Thank you. You look great, Thanks. as usual. Thanks. You look nice, too. Thank you. You know. We're I'm just trying. trying to compliment each other for the next time. That's hour. right. It's a mutual admiration society. Mm -hmm. No, but how are you doing? Doing well? Uh, yeah, except for, uh, not except, but it was funny. We went to that shoot, and I had said, hey, I'm pregnant, so I don't know what size shirt I'm going to need. And the guy was so sweet. He brought up, he's like, I brought in a medium, large, XL, and he's like, and you know, bigger than that, too, if you need that, whatever you need, Oh, girl. that's a diplomatic and answer was, for that. Kind of, he's yeah. like, which of these do you need? Oh, that is <laughs> good. Funny. I can't wait. When, when are we seeing that? When's that going to be? Next week or something? Soon, very soon. Soonish. Well, also speaking speaking of soon, we're all a little excited around here. We announced it uh, earlier this week. Uh, we are expanding once again, and uh, the Jason Show will be in Sweet Home Chicago <laughs> as of Monday. And it's it's really nice. It just is so gosh darn nice, and and. Uh, I, I want to say, too, because I've gotten a couple subsequent questions. The show isn't moving from here. I've gotten that a couple times, and I should have addressed that. To be clear. Right away. To be clear, the Jason show is and always will be based right here in the Twin Cities. So it's not going to move. No. And I think there's no reason for it to. I mean, um, you know, our show, I think one of the things I hope people like is the fact that it's light. We try to be funny. Uh, just to make you laugh and forget about the, the, the crazy world that we're living in right now. That's all we want to do, and I think that's universal. I don't think it matters where our show is based. I think it translates well, and I, and I hope that the Chicago audience will, uh, will embrace us. And mm -hmm. I was just thinking about it. You know, it's just it's, it's, uh, on Monday, and I hope you watch, and I hope you'll be in the audience. We want a giant audience. We still have tickets. If you want to be in that studio audience for Monday, uh, go to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show. But... Chicago, if you don't know this, and I, I've mentioned it briefly in other episodes, but Chicago is such a special market for talk shows um, because it was the birth of, of Donahue. You know, it's where Donahue started. And uh, Jerry Springer, Jenny Jones, and, and a little, little bitty show yeah. called The Oprah Winfrey Show. And, and you know... And I, you know, obviously I was born and raised in Chicagoland. It's, and then, so the show, and I didn't mention this on Tuesday, one of, I, I'm very lucky, I call my high school five, um, my girls who I've been friends with since 1986. Um, they reminded me, and I was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. The show will now be in my hometown. So kids that I grew up with will be able to watch the show, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, included in that group of people, my bullies. <laughs> Take that, Adam Zolvensky. There we go. Who dropped books on me on my first day of uh, high school? But yeah, anyway, nice guy. he's a nice guy. He turned that out to be a joke. nice guy. That but wasn't saying anything. no, he's nice now. But anyway, it just means a lot. So I hope you'll join us. Uh, we've added. We're going to add some new things. Uh, the show's really not going to change. We're not going it, to. It'll still be what you watch every day. Uh, but we've, we, we're fine tuning it a little bit, and uh, you'll see that uh, starting on, on on Monday. I just want to preemptive strike. I just want to thank 
everybody that works on this show uh, 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 so hard lately getting us ready for this. Jeff and Ted and Aaron and Eric and Rob and Kendall and Leo in the booth and all of our floor directors. I really, really just, just know that I appreciate you very, very much. So thank you. Okay, let's get started. Should we do today's show? Yeah. Why not? Let's do today's show. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's do this. <laughs> We got to teach Chicago that hot what hot dish means. We yes. got to do that. Yes. We got to do that on Monday. Okay, let's get started. Wow, oh. it was the moment we never, ever, ever thought would happen. Oh. Deadline dropped this big news yesterday that Kim Cattrall is returning oh. to the Sex and the City franchise. Oh. Yeah, oh. and will appear. And and will appear in the second season finale of the spinoff and just like that. Her scene took place, this is what we know. It was actually Variety that we got credit where credit's due. Variety found out that her scene took place in a car and will be shown, we think, toward the end of the season, if not the season finale. There was no interaction with the cast. There was no interaction with MPK, which is Michael Patrick King, the showrunner, or SPJ, or SJP, the star. Uh, it was a shot as a one-off, but, but people are saying that she could come back. She could, the door is open for a season three. I don't know if that's going to happen because look, she may have done, I don't, I, I don't want to focus on the bad part of this. There's a lot of positive, but the reality is Kim Cattrall and SJP have not made up. You know what I mean? There's not a thawing of this relationship. They, she had no interaction with Sarah. She shot this independently. But who knows? This is what's curious to me um, is two things. Is SJP mad that this news got dropped? Because could you imagine? Oh, just hang with me here. Mm -hmm. If I were the producer, I would have tried to keep this secret because it would have broke the internet on season finale night because nobody expected this. Nobody. No. They hate each other. No, let me rephrase that. Sarah does not hate Kim. I think Kim hates Sarah Jessica. But if we would have watched the season finale uh -huh. and then the very last scene, Samantha pops up, I, I would have peed right there on my couch. <laughs> Just this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, and then, if, and then if someone did leak it, who leaked it? Right. Was it Kim? You know what I mean? Because Kim also, my, my executive producer on the radio show reminded me of this. Ironically, Kim Cattrall has a new show starting on Netflix. Guess when that new show debuts? The same day that Sex and the City drops their new season. So, oh. I'm just saying. Well, after the news broke yesterday, many people that love pop culture we're reminded of the stars of another popular show that hate each other. TVLine.com president Michael uh, uh, Asiello uh, tweeted this. First look at Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall on and just like that. Now, if you're kind of lost, you're like, Jason, why is this funny? This is an image of Juliana Margulies and Archie Punjabi from CBS is The Good Wife. This scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I love The Good Wife. This scene in the final season was shot with the actors in separate locations and they were edited together because the rumor is Juliana could not stand her and she could not stand Juliana so much that they couldn't even film one scene together. <laughs> yeah. And I guess it's a perfect time to tell you mm -hmm. that Kendall has been green screened into the show. <laughs> in season seven. This is a the wall. studio audience sitting here right now can tell you, Kendall is not sitting here. This no. is, she's being green screened in. Mm -hmm. Kendall's in another studio. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm the traffic reporter. Because she hates me. Yeah. Right, Kendall? That's why I'm the traffic reporter, so I know how to do this. Yeah. Green screen thing. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. if you always notice, I don't look at Kendall. I always look up. And it's like, because <laughs> I can't get the right angle. No. You know what this also reminds me of really quick, and we'll, I swear I'll get to move. Um, let me go back one more step. When Suzanne Summers was fired uh, from Three's Company, and they made her come back to do a couple more episodes. Mm -hmm. It was so awful what they did to her. ABC forced her onto this little set with one phone. 
and they made her tape a whole bunch of phone calls and she wasn't allowed on the set. It was so bad. They treated her so poorly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, next in the dish. Part two of the Vanderpump Rules reunion aired last night. Now look, I don't like this show, but I do like drama. Uh, so <laughs> So enjoy. Sheena, because of the temporary restraining order that Raquel has against you, you will have to leave the stage before Raquel joins us. But before you go, what is the latest on the restraining order? We have a court date on the 29th. She claims you punched her that night after Watch What Happens Live. I will Live. speak to you about this after the 29th. You can't speak to me about it now? No. Did you punch her? I can't say anything. Okay. Does anyone else here think Sheena punched her? I think she might have slapped her. No. She can't. No, Look no. at her fingers, her fingernails. She can't make a fist. No. Sandoval, what do you think happened? Sandoval? <sighs> oh my God. Ew. He, <laughs> ew. Anyway, that restraining order has since been dropped. Sandoval also got upset with producers because he wanted an off-camera conversation with his mistress, Raquel. Things got so tense. Aaron. Things got so tense, the other Tom popped a Xanax on set. <laughs> Welcome to executive producer Jeff's life every day on the set. Yes, every day. Those aren't Flintstone vitamins over there. That's nope. right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> Well, green screen Kendall in, in a little bit. Leo, can we take Kendall's the two shot? Is she there? No, we don't have her yet. We'll, we'll green screen her in in just a little bit. We haven't gotten along since 2017, so that's why. <laughs>
Welcome back. Netflix is ready to drop another nature documentary. I love these, and I know you do too. Narrated by the great David Attenborough. They just released the trailer for Our Planet 2. Look at this. All life on Earth depends on the freedom to move. Experience the extraordinary journeys that shape our world. I love these. I love these so much. Uh, and listen to these numbers. The first season of Our Planet was viewed by more than 100 million households in March of 2021. Well, <laughs> at that time, we didn't have much else to do. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sourdough and listen to David Attenborough. The new season drops in two weeks. I'm just happy that it's another great thing to watch on Netflix. Netflix mm -hmm. has been a little dry lately. Uh -huh. This is good. And there's another show coming up on Netflix that I can't wait to tell you about. But do you watch these? Um, yes, I love anything David Attenborough. It's why I wasn't in my seat on time because I was watching something on my phone. No, it's because you really hate me. No. That's why we just green screen you in. That's, That's right. right. We weren't supposed to tell anybody. There we go. Our hot dish now continues with our insider to the stars. Please welcome from the Hollywood Raw podcast. He's not green screened. It's Dax Hold, everybody. <laughs> Good morning, Jason. Good morning, audience. How is everyone? Doing well. How are you? I can't complain. Um, Dax, uh, now, I usually get right down to business. You know, you and I don't really engage in pleasantries much, but, um, <laughs> but, but uh, I, I, I was, because I follow you closely on social media. I, I follow you very closely, and, and yesterday, uh, I noticed a picture that you posted that caught our attention in, here in Minnesota and in uh -huh. Seattle. Um, <laughs> and here's the picture. Uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> now, now uh, that young man looks familiar. Is that you? <laughs> that is me. Listen, I was trying to get into the influencer game at a young age. And so I was, you know, really repping the Coca-Cola back in the day. Now, I don't know why I'm wearing that in a school photo. Like, I don't know why my mom would send me to school in that. I don't know why I'd ever put that thing on. But, man, that is a beautiful, beautiful photo to look back at and cringe. Oh, <laughs> Dax, that is the world's largest children's turtleneck I've ever seen in my life. So, no, I think, I think what, what you're seeing there is I think, number one, I'm wearing a turtleneck. But I'm wearing a sweater on top of the turtleneck. Notice the mullet is going on too. Cause yeah. I, you got the, the longer hair in the back. I mean, all of it really is beautiful 80s at its finest. Yeah. Was it a chilly day that day? I mean, I. <laughs> I listen, I, I'm, I'm trying to come up with reasons why I would wear it. Yeah. I haven't come up with any at this point. Let me know um, if you do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, okay, now one more pleasantry. Uh, we we want to celebrate you. You guys, once again, the top rated entertainment podcast. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, it has been a very exciting week. We've kind of been all over the place. We went on Heather McDonald's Juicy Scoop the other day. That was obviously huge. Her podcast is massive. Um, and we hit the number one spot on the iTunes charts for entertainment news, which is a big, big deal for us. I mean, you know, you're beating out a lot of big entertainment spots. Like, yeah. you know, like you got Fox on there. You've got, um, you've got, 
uh, TMZ's on there. I mean, all of our like competitors, and we are number one, which has been a really cool thing for us. So thank you, I appreciate that. Heather, oh, of course, buddy. Uh, you know we're big cheerleaders, and vice versa, I know, and we appreciate it. Uh, well, Heather McDonald was here, and yeah, if you guys don't know, uh, Juicy, it's one of the biggest uh, entertainment podcasts around. What was it like being on Heather's show? Uh, it's fun. That was the second time yeah. she invited us back. She likes to get, like, basically what we talk about on our podcast all the time, she likes to then have us come on to hers to talk about. It. And it's really what behind the scenes information, you know, what it's like, because my co-host Adam, for people that have never tuned in, which you should be ashamed of yourself if you haven't. <laughs> um, he is an active photographer in New York. And so, you know, when the whole Harry and Meghan thing broke, he was the first person I called to be like, is this true? Did, the, did What happened? And, you know, he reached out to a couple of these guys to ask them, like, what went down? And he, we had all of this exclusive information about that, that so-called chase that day. And so she wanted to know about that. We get into behind the scenes of what it's like working in the Hollywood, pulling back the curtain. And so she likes to pick our brains for, you know, an hour and a half on her show, just like, you know, we've been letting our audience over the last couple episodes, we've been having our audience ask us anything. What it, nothing is off limits. They can ask us any questions they want. They just have to join our private Facebook group off the record and they can ask us anything. And we sat there and we've devoted a couple episodes to just anything. People want to know why I left TMZ, what it was like working with Harvey Levin, you know, everything. And we break it all down for them. I can't wait to listen. You'll be number one again next week. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Bye, buddy. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Jason. Find Dax's podcast, the Hollywood Raw podcast, wherever you get your podcast. It mm -hmm. is great. Dax is, look. Good for them. Dax has been around. I've, I'm so proud of him, and, 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 and he's been with us since The Buzz. I was uh, hosted The Buzz over there on our, uh, on our station. Next in the dish, Netflix dropped the trailer for the new season of Black Mirror. This anthology series, huge. We've been waiting a few years for another season, and while well, it's here, five new episodes. Here's the preview. You want to watch? Can't really do another true crime. What about? Oh my God. She even has your hair. The first question any platform is going to ask is, what's the hook? The first step is to recognize that you're not in control of this. Salma Hayek? Bingo. How's the coffee? The I did not say that like that. This is an adaptation of Joan's life. Can everybody that has Streamberry watch this? Hey, how are you doing out there? Cool. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, season six comes to Netflix in two weeks. If, you, if you've never watched what it is, it's a, re, it's a darker, more intense Twilight Zone, mm -hmm. is how I describe it. Mm -hmm. it's, re, it's the Twilight Zone times like 15. How long are each of the episodes? Are they about an hour? About an hour long. Oh, I could get into that. You could. Have you, yeah. you, you've never seen any of them? No, because I was always like, oh God, that's too real. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think all those too real. Things... What the hell's happened in your house? I think those things are so. What do you mean creepy? too real? I just feel like sometimes I have these nightmares, and these are the kind of things I think about. And if I saw it on TV, I'd be like, "Oh my God, it's real," and I could never leave my house again. When's that baby do? <laughs> a while. <laughs> you're, you're you're like a can of new Coke, slightly sweeter. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> Just a little nuttier. It's the lack of wine in that my baby, veins. man. I can't wait to. I'm gonna have a conversation with that kid eventually. I know. Yeah. This kid's like. I have a lot to say to that kid. Mm -hmm. Next in the dish. Recently, I got. Oh. Recently, I got a chance to watch it. I finished it last night. The new Netflix series about the real lives of underwater performers. <laughs> what? Yeah. What's an under? What? Stephanie Hansen was one in uh, in her twenties. <laughs> <laughs> and now the cooking mermaid. Anyway, they're more commonly called mermaids. All joking aside, this show is called, this docuseries is called Mer People. And before I give you my thoughts, here's the trailer. When someone sees a mermaid, it's magical, it's mythical, it's made up. Or maybe it isn't.
This is a half billion dollar industry. There are pageants, there are conventions, there are competitions, there are auditions, there are shows. Wait, that's a job? I always wanted to be a mermaid. I can't really grow much as a mermaid in Arkansas because I feel like I'm trapped in this box. I'm a landlocked mermaid. That's right. You heard that right. Uh, Sparkle Mermaid is a landlocked mermaid in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I, look, this show, the, the lesson in this show is there's a bucket for every fish. There really is. There's, because as someone who loves a subculture like Star Wars or the nighttime soaps, I'm not judging anybody. Because what I loved, all joking aside, for just a second, what I loved is the fact that people that really love something found other people that love it too and feel accepted. And in this world, well, in this world where you're criticized for everything and people are hating each other for a variety of reasons, the fact that these good people aren't hurting anybody, they love something that makes them happy and they found other people that they can talk to about it is pretty damn wonderful. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? So I'm not gonna judge them. Now. But was it entertaining? Oh, entertaining as all dickens yeah i mean yeah <laughs> seriously yeah. i devoured these four episodes it's so good you love these people look there are some best in show moments you're not laughing at them you're laughing at because this isn't real life for us you're laughing at the absurdity mm -hmm. like let me we got to go but for instance uh, later i think episode three one of the mermaids talks about the massive amount of industrial lubrication that you need to rub on your lower half to get the vinyl tail on you know what i mean that would have come that's in not a problem i have do you know what i mean that would have come in handy that time that you got stuck in some spanks well it would have come in handy when i got stuck in man spanks yes. in 2010 but yes. that's you know another story another day Time to meet <laughs> Mer people available right now on Netflix. Time to meet our next JVIP of the week. Today it's Pamela Matson from Anoka, one of my favorite towns. She loves the show because it's uplifting, funny, and chill. Are, is that a mermaid fin she has she's on her? her hair oh, oh, she's getting her hair colored. Okay, yeah. <laughs> God, I love people. Uh, Pamela says she learns things and laughs like crazy. Well, I love you, Pamela. She calls it the great uh, uh, part of her day when she can indulge in this treat. Well, we appreciate it. You get a mug. You're also entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in her studio, uh, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to our family at Advanced Aesthetics. We have such a good show, including former mermaid Stephanie Hansen. We'll be right back. drinks of summer lemonade or make that strawberry lemonade but how do you make it great how do you make a good fantastic homemade strawberry lemonade and then how do you mix it with other things stephanie hansen is going to tell you and then we're going to play you know you're old when <laughs> that and more when we come back
Great stuff. Well, it is officially lemonade season. Who knew? Uh, Aaron Schwab knew. <laughs> but hey, did you know this? You can spruce up your lemonade and add some more flavoring. But what flavoring? Here with her strawberry lemonade is the foodie queen and former mermaid, Stephanie Hansen, everyone. I think these are my people. Yeah, oh, they're great. Uh, Stephanie said alcohol, the word alcohol in the commercial break, and row one erupted. You know what they're I mean? They're very yeah. excited. Yeah. Okay, uh, strawberry lemonade. Okay, so I just found out, maybe from producer Jeff, that strawberry lemonade is not your favorite, so I'm so glad I brought some to make. No, I... <laughs> No, look, I don't enjoy lemonade. I think it's too sweet. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I, this no, might no, no, work. No. Like at the state fair, like the homemade lemonade, yeah. I love. So this is homemade. I'm, I, I'm sure I will enjoy this. You know, this might work for you, actually. Okay. Because I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. Normally, when you make lemonade, you make like a simple syrup, and it's a little tedious. This is much faster. Yeah, I was going to say, because right there... I don't want to make simple no syrup. I know, no one wants to make simple no, syrup. Some, no so I'm going to show you a quick way. Okay. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the rind off of the lemons because this white part called the pith is bitter. And we don't want that in our the lemonade. The pith? The pith. It's so very, if someone in your life is bitter, pithy. call them a pith. Yeah. <laughs> a pith or a pill. Yeah, a pill. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. so cut off the, that part. So we're going to cut off the pith. Okay. And then we are just going to cut it like very roughly. We're not even seeding it into just quarters, okay? So that's part one. It doesn't even have to be pretty. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay, so we are going to take a half a cup of sugar. That's all the sugar that's in here. So not too much. That's not too much, okay. Nope. And we're just gonna, I'm just eyeballing. I had about a cup in there. We're gonna just do a little zhuzh in my Vitamix. You can use a regular blender if you want. You're zhuzhing the sugar? I am because I just wanna make it a little finer. Oh. So that it dissolves faster. Oh, that's a little pro tip. Okay, okay so a little, little hands and hack. Yep. All right, so we're starting with that. Now we're going to take our rough chopped lemons and we're going to put them in there, seeds and all. Okay. Then we're going to add. The audience is surprised by that. I am too. We're going to add strawberries and we're going to use oh, about a pound. Y you would think they were gold coins. <laughs> uh, the audience, row one again, got very, very excited. excited. May I have a straw? Give yeah, me one. Yeah. I just, I love strawberries. They're nature's candy. I know. And if you can find like fresh farmer's market strawberries, which it's a little too early in Minnesota for that. I mean, do that because they're amazing. Yeah. All right. You could even blow your mind here you could even put the green parts in because they're nutritious and we're gonna strain out any of the stuff we don't want we are we are I, I gotta tell you I'm very curious of how this is gonna end up. I know it's gonna yeah. be great okay okay so we've got our lemons we've got our sugar we've got our strawberries we're gonna take three and a half cups of water we're making kind of like a concentrate Okay. Which is basically the idea is is it's going to be super flavorful for fl <laughs> easy for me to say. Yeah. Super flavorful for some and then we can add like some sparkling water and some other things to dilute it a little bit for others so we can make it a mocktail and cocktails. Okay. Hey, are you ready? Yeah, put that lid on a little so you're scaring me with that lid. Okay. The Vitamix is an amazing I love a Vitamix. They're situation. expensive but so worth it. Yeah. Okay, so that's really all it is. Okay. And we are going to just strain it. And you have to strain it. Yeah, because you're going to strain out any of the seeds, any of the green parts, any of the stuff you don't want. Okay. Okay. That's I'm, I'm with you so far. And again, I was telling Steph, you know, one of the best uh, people, one of the most popular drinks at Olive Garden is their strawberry lemonade. And I just, I don't know. I just, and Stephanie just told me she's never been to Olive Garden, which I got to take don't her. Don't tell yeah. everyone. No, we're doing this as a story. I'm I taking know. you I've to the OG. I've never been to Costco. I've never been to the Olive Garden. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, we didn't okay. go out to eat when I was a kid. Did and you live in a tent? I mean, what did you do? What do you mean? I, <laughs> did you live cooked. in a colonial village? Pretty it's not like we've been. The colonial village of Bloomington. We did have raccoons and turkeys in our backyard that were pets. <laughs> We'll be right back. Very we'll taste weird. we'll taste this when we return. Yes. More the Hansen. <laughs> we did have raccoons.
Dixon, Stephanie's Dish.com. And don't forget to listen to Stephanie's show. The oh. Weekly Dish, uh, Saturdays uh, on My Talk 1071, or get the podcast if you're listening to us yes. or watching us from other parts. Now, okay. G Jason was surprised how much kind of pulpy stuff is left in here. Yeah. So you just push that through with the back of a spoon. Okay. If you had a little more time, it'll just naturally do it. So it makes it, it's not as hard as I'm making it look. Okay, so this is our delicious juice. Okay. And now we're going to make some things. So if you just want like a traditional strawberry lemonade. Oh, I get it. So that's the base. Yeah. And, and we're going to take add, that base in a variety. Okay, got correct. it. Correct. You can add a little more like here, taste it because you might like it super flavorful like that. <laughs> okay. You liked it. Didn't I'm done you? with this. Yeah. Okay. Do you need any? I need a pop. You need a pop. I, do okay. you have any club soda? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of this lemon spindrift just because you're enhancing the lemony aspects. A lemon what? Spindrift. Do you know about this? Spindrift. That was a Fast and Furious movie. Oh, I love this yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. 50 calories and it's just juice and soda water. So Tokyo there's drink. no added sugar. Yeah, I'm Fast and Furious. I don't know about that. Okay, so that's just your regular strawberry lemonade. Um. This is the first Starby lemonade I've ever liked in my oh, life. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad! Yeah. I'm so glad! That's All refreshing. Right. And you know what? Again, not too sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to make a strawberry basil cocktail. Okay, so we're going to take our basil and we're just going to muddle it in our glass with a little strawberry and a little lemon. Okay, continue. Do you know about muddling? Well, no, when I'm getting ready, I have a water bottle if uh, row one starts to charge us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just. Okay, that is real funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, smell it. They don't give these shows no. to monkeys. Yeah, that's right. Okay, what now? Here, smell. It's just oh, like a so garden nice. in a glass. Yeah. So I am going to put some of the, we'll go with um, vodka. Vodka. I yeah. know. Jason likes vodka. <laughs> now, here's a little tip. Is someone booing vodka? <laughs> oh, ooing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you get that off? And if you can't, it's fine, but. Ugh. Oh, you did. There okay, we go. here's a little tip. On some of these shakers, this is an ounce. Oh! So, like, this drink is gonna be a two ounce drink. Oh, I can see, I never, yeah. I always, can I show you how I do it? <laughs> you just go one. I know, I go, this is what I yeah, do. You this count. is what I do, I go like this. I go, this is no joke. I go, one, two, three, four, and one for Tina Turner. Right yes. there, and then that's I, I like do. it. Yeah. Okay, right. so we're gonna add. We've got our vodka. We've got a little bit of strawberry lemonade in here. I know I've done this before, know, and I'm it's gotten stand back. aggressive. Yeah, go. Okay. Okay. Ready? <laughs> well, that's going in the new open. <laughs> okay, wait. Eric, mark that right there. Okay. Now, can you get it off? <laughs> that's always the hard part. Okay. Oh, look at you. You're like a professional. Well, I've okay. I've drank before. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not okay, and part. we're going to add a little ice here, and we're going to add a little lemon, a little okay. ginger. Okay. And we've got our basil in there. I mean, cocktails is a lot about the garnish, right? It is. You want it to look kind of pretty. Okay. And then you're going to have a special straw. I'm ready, row one. Okay. I'm ready for you. I just, I'm ready. <laughs> they start charging. I'm. We'll just put a little one in there for. Okay. But I mean, That's okay. That's beautiful. Yum. Make sure you stir up all the muddly parts. Okay. And oh, there is looks... vodka in this beverage, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. That looks so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll be keeping this. Now, one other thing I want to show you. We have and... like 40 seconds. Okay. Yeah, it's good. You could make a pitcher of these. So you'd use a cup and a half of gin in this case. I call it a gin strawberry cocktail. And you put all of your lemonade in, your gin, and then you can muddle some mint and put that right in your pitcher. So if you have a lot of people coming over and you don't want to get fussy with individual drinks, you just make up a whole pitcher for your party. Because who, yeah, that's a great, because nobody wants to stop down, go make a drink, yeah. stop down. 
because we know I failed at this once when I had a dinner party with Jace, but having a signature cocktail that's already prepared in a pitcher is an awesome way to greet the summer. It helps you and it helps uh, the guests. Yeah, because that's your right. guests don't want to like make it too fussy or fancy for you. So that's right. have everything set out so that people can either help themselves or you can make them a quick cocktail as they walk in the door. She's not fussy, but she is fancy. It's Stephanie Hansen, everybody. <laughs> Stephanie'sDish.com. Get her book. My book. Get her book. Listen to her show, The Weekly Dish, with our other friend Stephanie March. Uh, wherever you find your podcast, we'll be right back. Back with back in a moment. I really authentic, like really did. Welcome back. Uh, for many of us, it probably seems like yesterday when we were renting movies at Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, shoving quarters into a Pac-Man or a Donkey Kong game, or using a pencil to rewind a cassette tape that your girlfriend got you. What? Mm hmm Well, if you remember any of those, check out this new list from BuzzFeed. We sometimes pick on BuzzFeed, but this is a good one. The headline says, if you did any of these things growing up, you are officially <laughs> old as dirt. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Joining me to talk about some of these things is Kendall, who's not old, and Stephanie, who is not old. Is not old either. Not old. I'm old enough. I just had another birthday. Feeling it. Feeling it. I know. Well, Happy birthday. Sucks, so. I know. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so first up, you're gonna love these audience. First up, you are old if. You drove a car that needed two keys, one to unlock the door and one to start the car. Yes. I can, I can look honestly at, say that Kendall I don't is think confused. I, did this. I have no idea what that is. What yeah. do you mean, like to unlock the car door and an ignition yeah. key? Yeah, and you had two keys on your keychain. I remember my mom having this, but I don't think we weren't old enough to have cars that did that, were we? Um. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my first car was a powder blue Pontiac station wagon. Oh, yeah. nice. And, well, one of my first cars. And, yeah, the round key was for the lock, and the square, square. head was for the ignition. Yep. Yeah. Man. This is, look at her. You're just. Just terrible. Yeah. It was, it was a lot. Sorry. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Next on the list, you are old if answering the phone, having no idea who was on the other end. <laughs> yes. Let's remember, 
caller ID really didn't have prominence until like 95, 96, 97, and you know? your friend's spam risk was not calling you five times a day either. No, right. no. They didn't have like spam like that. So oh. when it rang, it was someone like calling your house for something. Do you remember 1-900 numbers? Oh, yes. Oh, God. What was that? Yeah. I That's worked in an numbers? alternative newspaper. We made a lot of money off of those. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's a 900 number? Sexy chat. It's oh. like, yeah, it's like, oh. it was naughty chat. Yeah, it was like, Dirty yeah. Oh, and it, okay. they charged you by the minute. I have never, ever called one of those. Up next. Uh huh. Sure I'm sorry, were. top row. <laughs> laughing. They know you. I know. Up next on the list of things that you, if you did this, you, you are old. You listen to music in your car using this cassette to CD adapter. Yes. Believe it or not. Yeah. Believe it or not, this item is still for sale right now on Amazon, and executive producer Jeff bought it. That's right, yeah. The cassette is coming back, and our and CDs are coming back, so don't sell your stuff. I know. Just like radio or um, records came back, we, they sold more records last year than CDs. Yes. So everything uh, old is new again. I, Hold on to your stuff. No. I understand that, but I got it to the high youngins. Take it from someone who lived through the cassette era they were not great back then and they're mm -hmm. sure the sound is not great now but i mean a mixtape yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah. you would be like crazy about a guy in the ninth grade and he would put all his favorite love songs on the mixtape for you and it was almost like he was right there next to you yeah. oh yes we did that with cds Yes. You had mixed CDs? Yeah, because yeah. we had you like iTunes burn them. and we'd burn them, yeah. Burn a CD. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I ran a marathon once with a, a CD player strapped to my belt. Yes, a <laughs> disc man. skip all the time. And it would skip the yeah. whole time I was running, yeah. but that's how you did it. Well, speaking of CDs, next on the list, you're old if having one of oh, these strapped yes. to your car visor and almost causing an accident trying to find the CD that you want. Yes. They yes. like all come out. <laughs> or the really thick books. Yeah. Yeah. I you still have mine. I keep them. Keep them. I'm telling you, these are coming back, and they uh -huh. will be collector's items. Yeah. Well, <laughs> next on the list, your old if having to turn the TV to channel three <laughs> just to use your VCR. Yes. Channel three all the way. Don't you kind of long for the simplicity of that, though? No. Like, no, there's a thousand channels. No. I can't find anything. There's no TV guide. No, girl. Yeah. I don't want to change the channel you, three. How do you learn what you're going to watch? There's no scrolling. Oh, I don't know. My Netflix account, I just look and I oh, say, see? like, oh, no, that there was a charm. Good. There was a charm, too. And you would find shows that you didn't know existed, and you would start watching them. Like, you don't have any of that now. Like, well, I mean, in, in all fairness, you could just start a show on Netflix, but yeah, I get it, yeah. You know, Here, it's not the same. Here's the next one. Your old if, the adrenaline of going to the bathroom or refrigerator <laughs> during a commercial break and one of your siblings screams, it's on, it's back on. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Because you, you couldn't, like TiVo brought that in, of no. like stop and rewinding live TV. That's fairly new. Yes. We the record things on like the VHS. You yes. know, you could record it and we'd get so mad because my dad would tape over all of it with the PGA, everything. Oh, yeah. that's cool. funny. Absolutely. Oh, I would record over everything in my house no. with Dallas. Yeah, that's it was funny. like every VHS had either Knott's Landing on it or Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't stop to get go to the bathroom, we would stop to get seconds of food. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something I need more sour else. cream! I, I'm just glad you said that. No, I was, just, you know, we ate a lot. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everyone. Stop the movie! I need more! I need more Cheetos. <laughs>
forget to get tickets to our show, eventbrite.com. And search for The Jason Show. It's time for the world's shortest segment. Today, the issue some kids face when your mom is famous. Kate, Hartz, uh, Kate Hudson shared a thirst trap on Instagram this week, <laughs> saying, sun's out, buns out. Now, uh, because we try to be a fan, we try to be a show for everyone. Uh, we can't show you the full thong without losing our liquor license. Uh, after her brother, Oliver Hudson, joked, uh, criticizing the pic, Kate said, well, you should just unfollow me then. Her 19-year-old son, Ryder, responded, saying he may have to unfollow his mom as well. <laughs> we'll be right back, back in a moment. I wish I looked that good. It's time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. We don't know what's in the segment until I read it right now. Uh, today, video that will just make you smile. Some preschool kids got a big surprise at the end of the school year. A visit from a former classmate who had moved away a few months before. Watch. <laughs> oh. Okay, now. Now, you know what sweet video of executive producer Jeff is smiling. I mean, that's like, he's loving this. How sweet is that? The boy got mobbed by his friends. Kaysen's mom arranged the secret visit with his former teacher. Love that. Oh. Tomorrow, Kendall and her mom are back with more book recommendations. It's the book club. Plus, we'll chat live with the stars of the new season of Manifest on Netflix. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Happy start of Pride.